Welcome to the Healthcare Provider Happy Hour. This is a safe space where we invite healthcare providers to unapologetically be themselves after the working day. My name is Jennifer George, and each week I will connect you with guests and stories that will help transform your stress to success and fulfillment. Are you with me? Grab your drink of choice and let's chat. Hey everyone, welcome to the Healthcare Provider Happy Hour. I'm your host, Jennifer George, and I'm joining you this morning with a cup of tea. If there was one word that I could eliminate from the communication vocabulary, it would be non-compliance. I don't know when I last used that word in my documentation or when I've said it out loud. It's been a very long time as I reflect on it right now. And the reason why I don't like the term non-compliance is because it's so finite, right? It's so labeling. If you see the word non-compliance on a patient chart, then everybody just assumes that they're non-compliant with every aspect of care, with every provider. And it really does leave a bitter taste, right? And it's not even necessarily true. So one of the things I like to tell myself, one of the mantras I like to use before I go into a patient interaction is it's not about me. Okay, one of the things I'll say to myself is it's not about me, it's not about me, it's not about me. Because when I do that, I allow myself to be fully present. I allow myself to be in the service of this person who I'm with, rather than it be more about what I know and what I know is best for this person. You see, patient-centered care, to me, and I've written a blog on this, and I can link you to the show notes of the blog, but patient-centered care, to me, is revolutionizing into human-centered care where in which it's not just the patient who has to feel like they are part of the experience, but also the provider. You are a very important part of the alliance. And you feeling like you are part of the team with your patient matters. Okay. So if you are not feeling like you belong, then that's going to create a conflict, right? It's going to create a conflict. You're not going to be able to perform in your highest self, and neither is your patient going to be able to receive that. Okay, so to me, it's not just patient centered care, it's human centered care. Okay, we're both in this. And part of that is being collaborative. So it's not just a linear way of empowering patients to make decisions, but it's also back and forth, right? So for example, if your patient is appearing non compliant to you, be curious about it. Why are they not complying? What is it about this that they don't like, that they don't see fitting for their life? What is it? And have that dialogue, have that conversation. I've had a conversation with patients before because I work on an inpatient rehab unit in hospital. So patients sometimes feel like they just have to partake, right? They just have to do it because they're an inpatient and they're in the hospital and they have to participate or else they're going to be sent home. But for me, it's really important to understand why that behavior is happening. So what I'll sometimes say to patients if I see this happening is I'll say, I feel like I'm pulling you here. I feel like you don't really want to be here, but you feel like you have to be like you're compelled to be here and I'm pulling you along in this treatment or in this interaction. And sometimes patients will say, yeah, I kind of do feel that way too. And then we talk about that, right? Well, why is that? Was there something that I can do better? How can I best serve you? And sometimes it's a whole other thing, right? Let's say it's a patient who refuses to call for a nurse before they get up and they get up and they've had falls. Or it's someone who doesn't consent to a personal alarm or a bed alarm. And we're so quick to put an alarm on them, but we haven't really thought about whether they consented to it or not. We haven't taken the time to ask them if it's okay in order to help them prevent a fall or severity of a fall. We have to think a little more critically and a little more empathetically. Okay, what if I were the patient who had been having to go to the bathroom and I was refusing to call? Why would I be doing that? Right. So just leaning into that conversation, I think, is really important. And what it does is it actually strengthens the therapeutic alliance. It won't weaken it. What weakens it is when you're not visible. What weakens it is when you're not transparent. What weakens it is when you're not fully present. 
So be curious about the non-compliance and why that's happening and try to understand it more. Consent is a whole other topic in a way, but I do think we assume it's implied a lot and it really isn't. We have to ask for permission and that is part of empowering patients is asking for permission to provide care. And one of the worst feelings sometimes as a provider is when you know a patient is not making a safe decision in our perspective and it will cause harm to them. Like that's a horrible feeling to have because one of the biggest laws is you do no harm, but you are not living their life. Okay. You can't take choice away from a patient. If a patient is competent and they're capable of making a decision that you may not be in agreement or in alignment with, your job is not to tell them, no, you are not the authority figure. Your job is to facilitate. Okay. Your job is to guide, educate, empower. Your job is to create the safest means possible for them to achieve this goal of theirs. Okay. So that is kind of the perspective that I come from when it comes to the term non-compliance is I become curious about it. Well, what about this? Is it that they're not liking or that isn't fitting for them right now? And I ask about that. And then I ask about how we can work together. And then I become more curious about why they're making decisions that might be putting them at more risk. Okay. And what that means to them. Why is that so? Because what you'll find is there's a bigger reason behind the decision. Like there's more of an emotional attachment to that decision. And then you are then responding with the practicality of it as well, right? With the perspective of safety in mind, always as a provider. And so then a patient can make a fully informed decision about their own care and about their goals and about where you fit into that plan with them. Okay, let me know what you guys think. I hope this gave you something to think about. It's a very gray area, right? But I do think the term non-compliance is often unjustified when I see it in charts and when I see it in chart reviews and I see it in consults and stuff. The first thing I think about is why are they non-compliant? Rather than just stating a patient is non-compliant, well, there's a deeper reason behind that. There's something else going on. And Part of what I do is try to figure that out. Okay. So if you guys like this podcast, please, please leave an honest review on iTunes. Simply scroll down, write a review, click five stars if you will, and just leave some honest feedback. I'd really appreciate it. It's what helps move this podcast forward and allows me to show up to you every single week. And if you want to learn more about this topic or have conversations about this topic, you can reach out to me on Instagram. My handle's at best obsessed with Jen. One thing I want to tell you is that coming down the pipeline, I am going to be offering communication training at a corporate level. So whether you are a healthcare institution, so university or college level, or whether you're an organization, whether it's private practice, hospital, long-term care, community care, doesn't matter all of them, I will customize a training and communication for your needs and for your staff's needs. So let me know if you're interested in that. Again, you can reach out to me on Instagram at best obsessed with Jen. I'm also on LinkedIn. All of those links are in the show notes and you can go to my website too and connect with me there. Until we chat next time, remember to stay well and to stay happy. So if you guys like this podcast, please subscribe and leave an honest review. Your feedback means everything to me. Your reviews are what moves this podcast forward, and I always appreciate receiving them. If you want to get a hold of me directly, reach out to me on social media. My handles are in the show notes, and you can always subscribe to my weekly newsletters at jenniferGeorge.co so that we can stay connected. So until next time, thank you guys so much again for your ongoing support.